Hello good people and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here we learn, connect and we grow. Microsoft Excel's cube functions is one of the most underestimated tools when it comes to data analysis. In this series of short videos, we are going to learn how we can use the cube functions to explore and get insights from data. We'll start off with a simple case study and then we'll create a data model. And if you know how cube functions work, as long as you have a data model, you are able to draw insights from any side of the data model. We use a combination of expressions to get this done. So join me in Excel and let's go through this in a few minutes. So we have sample sales data here and basically it's an e-commerce shop and for every sale it's recorded order date, delivery date, delivery mode. You have a series of customer IDs and product ID, the unit cost of the product, the quantity sold and then the selling price. Apart from this transactions table, there are three other tables. Now these three tables will give us further and better particulars on the transaction. So the details of customers are in one table, the details of the branches that the products were sold from are in another table, and then the details of the product IDs are in another. So typically in your data software or systems, this is how data comes. Okay, so we have a series of dimension tables, we call them, and fact tables, which records the transactions. Now let's take an example that you are supposed to find the total profit that was made on a particular product. So example here, we want to ask what was the total profit of mobile phones. Now, if you want to calculate that, the obvious challenge is that because mobile phones are in another table here as a subcategory, it will be difficult to calculate that answer from this, this single table. So we need to create what we call a data model so that we are able to bring all the tables together, connect them through relationships, and then we can use our cube functions to generate the answers that we need. So for starters, before you use cube functions, you need to create a data model. I'm going to show you that shortly. So there are about seven cube functions. And in this series, we are going to go through all of them and see what you can use to generate insights from your data. So let's first put these tables, which have already been named. This is called a transactions table. So to go to the data model, you need the power pivot tab, which can be found as a tab alone or under the data tab, you see it under the data tools. Okay. So if you are in power pivot and you are standing in a table, you can just stand in the table and add this table to the data model. So this is the power pivot space and you can also exit out to your normal Excel worksheet by using this icon here. Okay. If you don't have power pivot on this tab, that is if you are using a recent version, you can activate it, go to file, more options, and then add ins. So when you select add ins, this is a com add in. So you switch to com add ins. And when you click go, you have the option to activate Microsoft Power Pivot here. So I've already loaded the transactions table into the data model. And then I'm going to load the other three. So I'll take the customer table and then add that to the data model as well come back to my worksheet and then add the location table as well. And then finally, I'm going to add the product ID to the data model. As I said, this is to make it possible for us to have all the tables in one, one space. So now that these tables are in a data model, if you look at it in a diagram view, you realize that I now have my transactions table, which we call the fact table. So I'm going to place that here and then these ones are going to give me further details on each product ID, each customer ID and uh, location. So I'm going to expand this and we are going to create our relationships. So I just need common columns for each table to be able to connect. So as an example, 
customer table connects to the transactions table using customer ID, which is the least field in terms of granularity. So this is going to co connect to customer ID. So I'll connect it here. CT is going to connect to CT down here. And then finally, product ID is going to connect to product ID here. So by doing this, it means I can fetch all the details I need from the table. Now that this is done, you can now go out. The key measures that we need to create is revenue, cost, and profit. So if you want to answer how much profit you made from these columns, you need cost, quantity, and selling price. You can create what we call a measure. And that is one thing that Q functions will need, especially cube value. So you need a measure, and then you can use a set of expressions to call the particular aggregated value you need. So here, to create a measure, I will still come to my power pivot, go to measures, and then start a new measure. So my measure is going to be named revenue. And to calculate revenue, let me just show you something here. I need to take each record of quantity and then multiply it by a selling price. So this is a process called iteration. So you do it for each record and then you sum. There's a function for that in DAX. So I'm going to use sum X, okay, which does this iteration for me. I'll call the name of the table, which is transactions. And then the columns or fields I'm going to use is quantity times selling price. Okay, so this is going to calculate the total revenue when it iterates and sums up. I can format it using the number format and then I'll click OK. So before I do that, let me just copy this. I'm going to use the same formula for cost. So I'll just click OK and then my revenue measure has been calculated. Then I'll come here, new measure, and my measure name is going to be cost. And then I'll paste this without the second equal sign. And quantity now is going to be multiplied by cost so i'll format this thousand separator and then i'll click ok now that i've created these two revenue and cost measures the last thing i'm going to do is to create my profit so i'm going to name this profit and then it's simply going to be revenue which is the measure i created minus cost okay so this I can format again using a thousand separator and then I'll click OK. So one, we have a data model and then we created measures. These are all you need to start getting insights with Q functions. So now that we've created our three measures, which is revenue, cost, and profit, we are able to call this using the cube value. So as an example, if I stand in this cell and I do equal to cube value, okay, the connection is the data model. So you do a double quote and then this double quote will bring the data model. Now you can bring the measure. So I can bring another double quote and then call my measure. So my measures comes here and then I can call, let's say revenue or for this purpose, I can also call profit. Okay. So this will now represent the total profit that I have calculated from the entire table. If I want to see this profit by another perspective, if I want to see this profit I've calculated by another dimension, this is where the cube functions become very helpful. So take the cube value that you just calculated, the total profit as the white part. If I want to see this, let's say by phone, I have to draw that dimension from, let's say this orange part. I can take the profit and then slice it by any dimension that I have in any of the tables. So now let's go in and then slice this profit we've calculated by the dimension mobile phone. Now to be able to do this, you need to go first into the particular table, which is product. Okay. And then from the product, you bring a dot. It will lead you to all the fields in that table. So here I have subcategory, okay, and then I'll bring a dot. Beyond this point, everything here is a child, or we call them children. So if I want a particular item in this field, 
I'll just bring my square bracket and then put in the name. So this is mobile phones. And then I'll close off. Of course, we can link this to a cell so that it makes it more dynamic. And we are going to explore that in subsequent series. Then I'll close off my double quotes. So with just a simple line, without pivot tables or anything, I've been able to calculate the total profit for mobile phones in the table called subcategory. So when I hit enter, I get 310, 786. Of course, I'll share the data sets with you and you can practice along. Please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. For more of these short videos, you can send add to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly when we send them. All our old videos are on our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Up. Please visit, subscribe for notification of new videos. Or you can connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.